Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Wednesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up on the day's top stories right now. So the Justice Department has appealed a California federal judge's order that blocked President Biden's immigration policy. The rule allowed immigration authorities to deny asylum for migrants who didn't apply online first and didn't seek protection from a country they passed through before reaching the border. The White House said the policy reduced backlogs at the border. The ACLU is calling this policy cruel. The former personal lawyer for Donald Trump admitting that he lied about two Georgia election workers mishandling 2020 presidential election ballots. In a filing late last night, Rudy Giuliani conceded that he made defamatory statements about Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, but refused to acknowledge his statements caused damage to the women. He plans to argue his statements about voter fraud in Georgia were protected free speech. And some major developments with Hunter Biden to tell you about. The plea deal on the two tax charges has now fallen apart inside of a Delaware courtroom. The more serious gun possession charge is causing concern for the federal judge. Hunter Biden was expected to plead guilty in hopes of avoiding jail time. President Biden's political opponents believe that Hunter Biden's legal problems are part of a pattern of misconduct in the Biden family. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is saying the president hasn't addressed the allegations that Hunter made money from his father's connections. McCarthy says he knows about money that Hunter made improperly and that an impeachment inquiry could be the only way to get answers. The more of this continues to unravel, it rises to the level of an impeachment inquiry. What that simply provides is that the American public has a right to know, and this allows Congress to get the information to be able to know the truth. McCarthy says he believes an impeachment inquiry would let House lawmakers find the details surrounding the president and his family's finances and get to the bottom of what they believe is misconduct. Well, the House Oversight Committee is looking to see if the truth is indeed out there. It's holding a hearing to discuss what it is calling unidentified anomalous phenomena. You might know them as UFOs. Witnesses have been testifying on their close encounters. National correspondent Vanessa Mashanya, who's been dialed into this hearing all day, joins us now live with the details here. So, Vanessa, I know that this hearing is still happening. Um, what has stood out to you so far? What's been going on? A lot. Uh, a lot has been going on, and, and there's a lot um, from these meetings uh, that are uh, pretty bombshell, if true. Uh, so we are right now currently hearing from three retired military officials. Their name is David Grush. He's a former intelligence officer from the U.S. Air Force. David Fravor, uh, he is a retired U.S. Navy commander. And Ryan Graves, he's a former Navy pilot. And some of this testimony is, is pretty shocking. So David Grush, he's that former intelligence officer. He says that he has personally met with individuals with firsthand knowledge of non-human origin craft, saying that UAPs that uh, we've seen, uh, you know, on, on video uh, or heard claims uh, could possibly be from, originated from something that isn't a human. Uh, and he also claims that uh, the government has secretly directed uh, funds, unsanctioned funds to UAP related programs under the table saying that they are above congressional, congressional oversight. Now, as far as the technology they've seen and, and the witness accounts of seeing UAPs or UFOs, um, these witnesses say that they saw UAPs stay perfectly still in Category 4 hurricane winds and then reach uh, Mach 2 in a matter of seconds, which uh, they say with our current technology, a human couldn't survive those kinds of G-forces. And they also saw them coming down from about 80,000 feet of elevation, uh, which is space. Um, so this kind of technology alone, uh, retired Naval Commander David Fravor says that he believes this is a threat to keep this kind of tech a secret. Take a listen. The, the technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. And you could put that anywhere. If you, if you had one, you captured one, you reverse engineered it, you got it to work, you're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants, and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. So the... 
the goal, uh, there's several goals that um, this subcommittee wants out of uh, this this hearing, one of them being transparency. They want to encourage the federal government to be transparent about these sorts of things. What do they know? What kind of threat do these UAPs, US UFOs have against the American public? And also, um, these witnesses are saying they want um, a system, an organized system, in, to be able to report UAP sightings um, in a way that is taken seriously and in a way that reduces stigma. Um, these witnesses say that they themselves or people that they know have dealt with um, retaliation or uh, stigma um, and fear of losing jobs uh, because of, you know, what they're saying, what they saw, and, and the fear of coming forward for that. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, this again, this is a, a some bombshell first accu accusations, as well as uh, just the, the testimony and hearing what these, these men saw. Um, and, you know, Newsweek did a poll earlier this year and found that 57% of Americans believe that the government is hiding information on uh, UAP. So, you know, the, the public has a big interest in this. The, the, the you know, Congress does, as well as uh, military officials who um, they say they've been, um, again, ridiculed um, for seeing these things. And, and hopefully um, because of their uh, uh, coming forward, uh, maybe they'll see some some change when it comes to transparency, Veronica. Yeah, it is so interesting. And, and like you were just saying, lots and lots and lots of new information coming out of this hearing, if it is true. So it really begs a question as to who these witnesses are and how long this has been going on for. Uh, but of course, I know all of this will be investigated. Vanessa Mishanya live in Seattle. Vanessa, thank you so much. So come on, Scripps News Live. Bronnie James recovering in the hospital after a terrible scare on Monday. We're going to take a look at the questions that doctors are asking right now to determine why he went into cardiac arrest. Plus, a family is opening up about their battle with Alzheimer's. They're reacting to the new FDA-approved drug, renewing hope for Alzheimer's patients. That's next. Monster demand, staffing shortages, and possible relaxing of important safety measures. Scripps News breaks down the question, is it safe to fly the friendly skies? A Scripps News special report tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems, like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. Eight hundred two eight seven five two six four. Selena, are you sure? We got this. Grab the always pan. This is just what the doctor ordered. Put a gold star on my disorder. Can't stop myself. It's true. I like the way you move. Uh huh. But you look like fun. 
the Salida Gomez collection, only at our place. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Get the stories that will shape each day. That's a lot of folks talking about this. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush, weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central, only on Scripps News. New details on the case of the Gilgo Beach serial killings. Police have been searching through the backyard of the suspect's Long Island home, even breaking out an excavator. This has been going on now for about two weeks. National correspondent Alex Miller explains the case is far from closed. A shattered community. It's unbelievable. It's shocking. And a vow from police. We will uh, go into every single crevice to make sure that there's uh, not something that we, we miss. Investigators using excavators, police dogs, and ground-penetrating radar at the home of a New York architect who police suspected killed at least three women and maybe more. Suffolk County District Attorney Raymond Tyranny says they found a massive amount of material in their days-long search of Rex Huerman's home. We were looking for you know, tangible items of evidence as well as trace evidence including blood and DNA and uh, hair fibers and the like. And when you talk about something like that, that is a process that uh, it takes a while. Police suspect Huerman is behind the so-called Gilgo Beach murders, in which the remains of four young women, all of them sex workers, were found near Long Island's Gilgo Beach in 2010. But it wasn't until last week that police charged Huerman with three of the four murders and named him the prime suspect in the death of the fourth woman. Now police suspect the 59-year-old husband and father of two killed the women in his Massapequa Park home while his family was out of town and dumped the bodies just a few miles away. His wife of more than 27 years is now filing for divorce. During the search, the investigators took apart the home's wooden deck and discovered a walk-in vault with reportedly hundreds of guns inside. Suffice to say, there was quite a few uh, weapons uh, found in the house. Tierney says they can't roll out whether someone was killed in the home until they test the evidence. But the investigation is far from over, stretching into two more states as police search two of Huerman's Las Vegas condos and land he owns in South Carolina. Area police departments are reviewing their cold cases to see if they're connected to Huerman. Now, a former roommate of one of the victims is voicing his anger with investigators, telling the Associated Press he gave police a description of the suspected killer and his truck 13 years ago, but he says his testimony was overlooked for years. Investigators aren't ruling out other suspects in the killings. Huerman has pleaded not guilty to three counts each of first and second degree murder and is behind bars on suicide watch. Alex Miller, Scripps News, New York. A federal investigation is underway into a multi-state salmonella outbreak. It sent at least six people to the hospital and it has left 10 other people sick. The states affected right now are New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and Massachusetts. The CDC is saying most patients reported eating 80% lean ground beef from ShopRite stores. As of right now, no recalls have been issued. The agency reminds people to thoroughly cook ground beef until the meat's internal temperature reaches 160 degrees. LeBron James's son, Bronny, recovering after suffering a cardiac arrest on Monday. It is still unknown what triggered the life-threatening condition in someone so young and seemingly so healthy and what it also means for his future on and off the court. Science and health correspondent Lindsay Thies explains how often young people face this type of life-threatening situation. So we do know Monday during a basketball practice at USC, Bronny James suffered a sudden cardiac arrest and for some point in time was in the intensive care unit. A terrible scare for a family poised to become an NBA dynasty. Bronny James, son of the legendary LeBron James, suffered a cardiac arrest Monday while practicing with his teammates at the University of Southern California. The fact that he's out of the ICU fairly early, that's a that's always a good sign. The James family says it will talk about what happened to Bronny at practice and what's happened since, quote, when there is more information. For now, they say they are grateful to the medical staff at USC for rushing him to the hospital and potentially saving his life. 
According to the Mayo Clinic, sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death in young athletes. It's estimated that 1 in 50,000 to 1 in 80,000 young athletes die of sudden cardiac death each year. The question is now, all of the testing that they are doing, and I'm sure they will be do, that they have done or will be doing thorough testing on Bronnie's heart to look for all of those problems that may be associated with it that you mentioned. You know, does he have some sort of muscle problem? Does he have a problem with the electrical circuit of the heart? Does he have a problem with the valve or the main arteries of the heart? And uh, or is there a problem with the blood vessels that supply the heart? 18-year-old Brawny is entering his freshman year at USC. ESPN's ranked him as the number six point guard in the class of 2023, and he's widely considered to be one of the NBA's top prospects. <laughs> Father LeBron, who broke the NBA's all-time scoring record in February, has admitted to delaying his retirement with the hopes of playing side-by-side -side with Brawny in the future. Now, when you take a look at the big picture, sudden cardiac arrest in athletes is still considerably rare, and there are a number of different contributing health conditions that could cause such a sudden cardiac arrest. Lindsay Thee, Scripps News, San Francisco. Alzheimer's impacts more than 6 million Americans, and health experts say that the number is growing fast. But with a new FDA-approved drug on the market, patients and caregivers have renewed hope. Rochelle Aline with Scripps News Tampa spoke with a family fighting for every memory. This is cool. It looks like, like I'm in the or something. A lifetime of memories decorate the Hall family's Bradenton home. Fam, it's the fam. And serve as a reminder of the life Michelle Hall lived before her own memory started to fail about five years ago. I was the, um, um, how many that General was? counsel. General counsel for the sheriff's office wow. for 10 years and then a little a little bit other bit. And that's when things kind of, kind of got weird, right? Because um, I couldn't spell, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything really. With her husband, Doug, by her side, Michelle says she spent two years searching for an answer. And finally, just before Thanksgiving in 2020, she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. A lot of boo-hooing, wanted to kill myself, you know, this is not my story, I'm going to get out when I can. And then, of course, you think, oh, wait, but I have these kids. It was a big change of trajectory, you know, it's not what you think about when you think about your life and retirement and traveling and, and having a lot of uh, time together after you're both retired together. Fueled by her love of family, Michelle is currently fighting for every moment and memory. And right now, she's doing it with the help of the drug Aduhelm. The IV infusion drug promises to slow the progression of the disease by targeting a protein that builds up in the brains of those with Alzheimer's. Michelle was able to qualify for the drug in 2022 before clinical trials were closed, following congressional questions about its cost, its FDA approval status, and a battle with Medicare over coverage. We were lucky in that Biogen said that they would give us some free doses in between, and they said we're not paying for it, and they came back and said, well, we'll give it to you for free for as long as you want it. So we were really lucky because a lot of our friends that are in her stage wanted it, but at that point, they just cut off. But according to the FDA, there's now a newly approved drug on the market that may be a better fit for Hall and her friends. Lakembi is the first to get full FDA approval. So we sat down with an Alzheimer's Association researcher to learn more about the drug Lakembi. Stephanie Wardlow says clinical trials have showed that this treatment slowed cognitive decline by about five months. Which would give them more time with their partner, more time with their children or grandchildren. They might be able to plan longer, you know, their finances, they'll be able to participate fully in hobbies and interests. So we're talking quality of life. According to Wardlow, Lakembi works similarly to the treatment that Michelle is currently using, and it is only approved for people who are in the earliest stages of their disease. And she adds that right now, the Alzheimer's Association is encouraging those who may qualify to talk to their doctor. I mean, you've got to have these 
really important discussion so you can discuss the benefits and the risks because there are risks associated with taking any kind of medication. They're conversations that the Halls are already having. The big thing is, if this one is so much better, do I want to stop for what probably would be a year, then just go back to on that? It's, it's hard to understand whether which one is going to be best for me. And as they weigh their options, the Halls say they're focused on making as many new memories as they can. Hang out with the pets. Well, yeah, of course. You <laughs> see what happens here. <laughs> yeah. No, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well right now. I'm Rochelle Aline for Scripps News. And we will be right back. Nothing is more important than family. A family you're born into, a family you choose, or a family you make. I'm Padma Lakshmi. I came to this country when I was four years old with my mother. We came here because it was a land of opportunity. But for many, that's not the case. Porque primero me separaron de mi mamá y de ahí de mi hermano. Immigrant families are being separated. Black and brown families are torn apart by a broken legal system. LGBTQ people suffer discrimination in adoption and health care. The need to protect and defend the civil liberties we all hold dear is more urgent than ever because families belong together. You can help by joining the American Civil Liberties Union today. Call or go online now and become an ACLU Guardian of Liberty. All it takes is just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day. The ACLU has fought to allow LGBTQ couples to marry, for racial justice, to stop family separation. We can't do this work without you. Together, we can defend our democracy, ensure liberty and justice for all, and keep families strong. So please, call the ACLU now or go to myaclu.org. When you use your credit card, you'll receive this special member kit to show you're part of a movement to defend free speech, protect our civil liberties, and keep families together. I hope you'll join me in supporting the ACLU today because we, the people, means all of us. Call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. Light up that grill because this rare Omaha Steaks deal is hotter than fire. For a limited time, you get four of our famous fork tender filet mignon, four air chilled boneless chicken breasts, four boneless pork chops, four burgers, and four jumbo franks. All of this for just $99.99. Order right now, and you'll get 12 more burgers free. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV today to find all the hot deals. Welcome to this year's cheese rolling competition. Who will catch the cheese and win the $500 prize? Who looks like we got a first timer coming down the hill now? A barrel rolling down the hill. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Digging deeper into the headlines. We have some big stories to get to tonight. Shedding light on groundbreaking investigations and ending your night with something new. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Christian Bryant. Scripps News Tonight, live tonight, starting at 8, 7 central. Well, a Wisconsin woman doesn't live in a 100-acre wood, but she could probably use one to store her Winnie the Pooh collection. She told James Groh with Scripps News Milwaukee that she can't bear walking away from Winnie. The Guinness World Record for the largest Winnie the Pooh memorabilia collection just keeps on growing. My name is Deb Hoffman. I'm the Guinness World Record holder of the largest Winnie the Pooh collection in the world, and I'm from Waukesha. Deb keeps breaking her own record. She has 23,632 unique Winnie the Pooh items from stuffed animals to clocks to pictures to costumes and so much more. It all started in the early 90s. She went on the hunt for a Winnie the Pooh novelty telephone. Then it became like a treasure hunt to find more. 
I started collecting poo here and poo there, poo everywhere, and and before you know it, um, I had a I had a spare bedroom full of Winnie the Pooh items. Deb has held the title since 2008, when she had a meager 2,891 pieces. But why does she keep doing it? I mean, she's already got the record, right? Well, the answer is simple. And I'm having so much fun collecting, meeting people, doing different things. Boy, I just don't see an end in sight. Plus, she doesn't want anyone overtaking her. I would like to say that it's friendly, but I'm very competitive, and so yes, I would probably do most anything to, to keep the title. Even though she has more than 23,000 unique items, she still finds new ones. It's like a treasure hunt, and a forever treasure hunt. Deb also published her own book in May, chronicling her 30 years of collecting. Hoping that the book ends up being an inspirational piece that says, you know what, whatever it is in life, go do it and have fun. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, so have fun today. Deb couldn't do this alone. <laughs> she describes her husband as her enabler, but in a loving way. The excitement for me really was watching the excitement on Deb's face. What might surprise some people, you wouldn't know the two are Winnie the Pooh collectors if you walked into their home. And most people have, have specified that when they walk in the house, they expect to see a hoarder situation. And it's not like that at all. They keep the place neat and organized, just like the database Gary created to log all the items. And it's a good thing he created it, too. She's not going to stop anytime soon. After all, people keep sending her memorabilia, too. It's like she's got her hand in the honey pot, and she just keeps on coming back for more. Wow. Now, now that is impressive. <laughs> and that was James Grove reporting for us from Waukesha, Wisconsin. And finally, the Star Team USA is back in action tonight in their quest for a third straight Women's World Cup. They're going to be facing the national team from the Netherlands. The Dutch women are expected to provide a stiffer test than Vietnam, which the U.S. easily defeated last week in its first match of the tournament. Now, like the United States, the Netherlands is also 1-0. Both teams are looking to move on to the knockout round that happens next week. Good luck to you. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on ScriptsNews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live, including a staffing shortage at 911 call centers across the country. The CEO of the National Emergency Number Association will join me to break down why burnout has hit the industry so hard and what it can mean for you the next time you call 911. We'll be right back. I've been putting off getting life insurance and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need if you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions, and rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answer yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free, and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059.
Okay, thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday. It's now 1 p.m. in the East and 10 a.m. out West. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome to Scripps News Live. And we begin this hour with new details and a major blow to the Biden administration's attempt to crack down on illegal border crossings. A federal judge in California has blocked the controversial immigration policy. The Justice Department immediately appealed the ruling, and the policy allowed immigration authorities to deny asylum for migrants who didn't apply online first and didn't seek protection from a country they passed through before reaching the border. The White House is saying that the policy reduced backlogs at the border and the ACLU is calling the policy cruel. Right now on Capitol Hill, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas testifying before the House Judiciary Committee on the border crisis. Mayorkas is facing House Republicans who've been pushing to impeach him over his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. Though border crossings still remain high, there have been fewer arrests in the past few weeks. Let's get you right out to Congressional Correspondent Nate Reed, who's live for us right now on Capitol Hill. So, Nate, Republicans have repeatedly criticized the Biden administration over its handling of the southern border. What's happening in this hearing right now? Has it been following the same trend? Well, Veronica, the, the hearing's in a brief recess right now, but it is pretty much as partisan as hearings get on Capitol Hill. Uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Secretary, has faced numerous calls over the possibility of his impeachment. House Republicans in the past six months or so, ha that has really dominated the conversation over potentially impeaching a Biden administration official. Even during this hearing, he is drawing sharp lines with Republicans on the panel. Here's an important interchange with uh, Representative Chip Roy of Texas just a couple moments ago. You look straight at the American people, straight at me, straight at every, every person on this committee, and said, we have operational control. Why? Congressman, two points. One, you did not let me complete my answer. Two. Oh, hold on. That, or give me your second point. Go ahead. Thank you. Two. Two, the Secure Fence Act defines operational control as not a single individual crosses the border. I'm aware. I read it. And I read it to you. And you read it. And in fact, you said, I do. You didn't hesitate. You didn't say, I do. I need, I need to explain what I mean by I do. You said, I do, over and over again. And here's the problem with that. This is a pattern. And Veronica squabbling over definitions is kind of barely scratching the surface here. Really, Republicans are uh, largely opposed to represent, uh, excuse me, to uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. They're not happy with his handling of the southern border. To them, he is in many ways a figurehead emblematic of the Biden administration's overall handling of the southern border, and they've made it a, uh, a key point of their oversight and of the House Judiciary Committee to investigate and to uh, uh, hold him to account in their words, as you just saw very uh, testy up here on Capitol Hill during that hearing. Yeah, uh, the video was uh, was telling there, Nate. And earlier this month, Secretary Mayorkas was telling reporters that he has been unfazed by this uh, continuing threat of impeachment. Uh, but what's happening on both sides of the aisle? Are congressional Democrats standing behind him right now? They really are. It's really a tale of two hearings. I've said that phrase before, and that's because when Republicans have the opportunity to question Secretary Mayorkas, it's kind of a different story. A lot of defense of the Homeland Security Secretary and the situation that he finds himself in uh, regarding the southern border. At the start of the hearing, Representative Jerry Nadler, who's the ranking member of the uh, House Judiciary Committee, said this about what to expect. Today's hearing will not be, will not be about legitimate congressional oversight or finding out the facts. Instead, the chairman and his colleagues in the majority will use today's hearing as a predicate for a completely baseless attempt to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. They will do so at the behest of the most extreme MAGA Republicans. It will be one more exercise in political theater for the right-wing outrage machine before the August break. And sadly, the outrage will be entirely evidence-free. One Democrat, Representative Glenn Ivey of Maryland, pointed out that some of the calls to impeach Secretary Marcus from House Republicans started almost two years ago. That's right when he began his term as Homeland Security Secretary. Those calls likely not going anywhere, Veronica. All right, Nathana Reed, live on Capitol Hill. Nate, we always appreciate you watching it. Thank you. So the House Oversight Committee is looking to see if the truth is indeed out there. 
It's holding a hearing right now to discuss what it is calling an identified anomalous phenomena. Now, you might know them as UFOs. Witnesses have been testifying on their close encounters. National correspondent Vanessa Mashanya has been dialed into this hearing for us all day. And Vanessa, I understand that the hearing is still taking place right now, um, but what has stood out to you so far? Tell us more about what these witnesses have been saying. Hey, good afternoon, Veronica. It has been pretty shocking hearing this witness testimony. Now, I, I have to add a disclaimer. Uh, this testimony uh, is from the witness's account, right? Their claims have not yet been investigated. Um, but if they are what they're saying is true, it's a bombshell for sure. So we've heard from David Grush. He's a former intelligence officer in the Air Force. Uh, David Fravor, he's a retired Navy commander. And Ryan Graves, a former Navy pilot. Now, one witness, uh, David Grush, he says that he's actually met with individuals with firsthand knowledge of uh, non-human origin aircrafts. And he says that uh, non-human remains have been found at crash sites of UFOs. Um, as far as the technology that uh, the witnesses have been saying that they've seen with their own eyes, they say that they saw a UAP or UFO uh, sit perfectly still in what they describe as category four hurricane winds and then reach Mach uh, two Mach speed um, in just a matter of, of seconds. Um, and they say that at the speed of which they saw that aircraft move, they say that uh, we do not have the technology to have a human survive uh, that kind of G-force. Now, this kind of technology alone is why uh, Navy Commander, former Navy Commander David Fravor, uh, believes that this is a threat to keep this kind of information secret. The, the technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had, and you could put that anywhere. If you, if you had one, you captured one, you reverse engineered it, you got it to work, you're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it, nothing. So at its core, this meeting is, or this hearing was all about uh, transparency. The, the committee wants to send a message to the government that they should be uh, transparent about what they know about UFOs. The public should know, they say, um, you know, what kind of threat there may or may not be from these unidentified f objects uh, that pilots have seen in the skies. And the witnesses also called for some sort of an organized, transparent way to uh, report, uh, for witnesses to report their, their sightings. Right now, for both uh, military um, officials and for commercial air pilots, uh, they don't have a system to report. And there's a lot of stigma, as you could probably imagine, around these witness accounts. They say that uh, people, uh, airline pilots, uh, military pilots, they say that they're afraid to come forward most of the time with these findings for fear of, you know, their mental health coming into question, uh, their their abilities coming into question. So they really want to diminish that that stigma. So we'll just see where this uh, hearing leads in terms of, you know, if this is going going to uncover uh, some more secrets that the government may or may not be hiding. Who knows? But it is certainly, Veronica, uh, quite, quite the testimony to hear. And I know that this is, what, a House committee hearing? So I understand that these witnesses are testifying before lawmakers, but I would love to hear lawmakers respond as to why the government would, 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 would hide something like this. Um, I know there are a lot of questions that still remain at this point, uh, Vanessa, but of course you're gonna be tracking it for us. We're gonna go ahead and circle back with you. Vanessa Mishanya live for us there in Seattle. Vanessa, thank you. Still to come on Scripps News Live, babies and toddlers are overdosing on fentanyl at an alarming rate. A Scripps News investigation analyzed hundreds of cases and discovered missed opportunities to save lives. I'm hurt. I feel like the people that we hire as a community to protect our kids and us drop the ball. Are America's systems to keep kids safe working? We're gonna explore after a quick break. If you have this and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs 
which for those on Medicare or soon to be, is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare Supplement Plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, you'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. Your plan goes with you anywhere you go in the country. Even better, these are the only plans of their kind, endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out-of-pocket costs and more peace of mind, consider adding this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Plan. Take charge of your healthcare today. Just use this or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance free system. Call 1 833 2 Gutters. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. News investigates the silent toll of the fentanyl epidemic. Our team found hundreds of poisonings involving babies and toddlers in nearly every state. Scripps News investigative correspondent Lori Jane Gleha found the safety systems we have in place to protect children are often not enough to save a child. Hey, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This Alabama sheriff's deputy is back up, rushing back up, to save a life. Back up, back up, back up. How long has she been down? How long has she been down? She's just one okay, year old, poisoned by fentanyl. The deputy administers a powerful opioid antidote, and in an instant, she's breathing again. But for so many other children, help often comes too late. Where's the fentanyl at that he got into? Oh, he had to have, my purse is open. Oh my God, no. Where, Breathe for me, okay? Breathe for me. You have anything in your mouth? Our exclusive Scripps News investigation analyzed more than 260 fentanyl overdose cases nationwide from the past few years, including deaths mm -hmm. and near fatalities involving innocent infants, toddlers, and young children. In about half of the incidents we examined, we found prior red flags. The children were from families who were already on the radar of police or child protective services for drug abuse or child neglect. But despite these warning signs, the children still overdosed. What was he? Come on. Jose Carter lived through the nightmare of one of these incidents in Chandler, Arizona, when his little boy almost died. Describe that a little bit when they said overdose and he's 16 months old. Yeah, he's, what do you mean you overdose on fentanyl, you know? But what do you do? How do you get it? He's a baby. 
Today, his three-year-old is happy and playful. A very different picture from 2021 when the child's mother, Jose's ex, had visitation with the baby at her home and rushed him to the emergency room. He had six Narcan shots and a 24-hour Narcan drip. How do you think he got the fentanyl in his system? I think he ate it. You know, he picks up everything off the floor. A police officer's body camera captured this video of the baby's mother as her son received life-saving treatment in a nearby hospital room. I don't know. We have been doing really good. She reminds them that she also overdosed on fentanyl the previous year. Um, ever since the, um, the OD, um, I've just been trying to stay sober. Records Scripps News obtained reveal caseworkers did conduct a child neglect investigation months earlier after receiving the report that the mother had overdosed with her children in the home. But they did not find evidence to support the allegation since the state told us the child was with a babysitter during the incident. So they closed the investigation, determining the child was safe with another parent and provided no services to the family before Jose's child nearly lost his life. Because I blame myself for it all the time. Why? Because I, I couldn't protect him, you know, I couldn't help him. How would you describe how this system worked? I, I think the system could have, it probably could have worked a lot better for my situation. Do you think it failed? I think it failed. We found similar failures and missed opportunities in dozens of states. Places like Madison, Wisconsin, where child protective service workers received at least nine reports expressing concern about Zariah Hawkins' family and her safety before she died, just a few days shy of her first birthday. So you know I'm going to tell DCS that kid's right. here, right? Yes, sir. She's going to stay here, I promise you. You can, you can tell DCS, sir. In Tennessee, this body camera footage shows a toddler in a homeless encampment. I've seen that child in here one too many times, and I'm, I am not happy. DCS did respond, but police are now investigating how fentanyl killed this little girl just a few months after this visit from an officer. They love you. And in Rolla, Missouri, little Madison Stodolsky overdosed on fentanyl and died a few days before Christmas in 2019. So tell me what this is. Like, when did you set this up? I set this up right after Maddie passed. I wonder what she would have been like. She would have started school this year. Christina Forrester is Madison's grandmother. I have her toothbrush. Madison was just 22 months old when she overdosed on her parents' fentanyl. Both parents are serving prison time for her death. I'm pissed. I'm, I'm real mad. I'm hurt. I feel like the people that we hire as a community to protect our kids and us drop the ball. Full grammy kiss. Forrester says she was in the dark about the drugs, but government child protective workers and police did know about the dangers. She told us Madison tested positive for drugs at birth and again days before she died. Although social workers did take steps to protect Madison, Forrester says they should have done more. To me, she was my world. And they let that go. These documents we uncovered spell out in black and white what Forrester is so angry about. They show someone called the child abuse hotline about Madison a month before she died, but a state caseworker couldn't get in touch with Madison's parents and sent this letter instead. Then, about two weeks before Madison's death, police searched her family's home for drugs. You can see Madison with her mother in these photos we obtained from that day. That's when the police contacted the state's children's division to report concerns. This time, a caseworker arranged for Madison to stay with a relative until drug tests came back. But Madison's parents didn't follow the plan. Two weeks later, Madison ended up back in her parents' home, and within hours, she was dead. How well do you think the system here in Missouri is working, given that children have died? Any time a child dies, there's clearly an indication of uh, a failure in the system. Whether that system failure is a result of parental inadequacy 
the reality is we all have an effort of responsibility. Adam Crumbliss is the deputy director of the Department of Social Services in Missouri, which oversees the state's children's division. He told us confidentiality laws prevented him from speaking specifically about Madison's death. Would you say it's fair that some of these children fell through the cracks? I think it's a fair assessment to say that in Missouri, when you have a stressed workload of caseworkers, that the cases are far beyond what an individual caseworker could, could effectively handle. Crumbliss says the state is working to hire, retain, and better compensate more workers while looking to develop strategies that can prevent these cases. Love and miss you, baby girl. For Christina Forrester, it's now too late. But she says she'll never stop fighting to bring attention to the young life that could not be protected. If I could save grandparents from having to go into a crematorium and kiss their grandbaby goodbye, and that being their last vision of that baby, it's worth it. Christina Forrester filed a lawsuit against the caseworker, claiming that she didn't file the right paperwork that would have triggered additional protections for her granddaughter. That case went all the way to the state Supreme Court, but it was dismissed a few days ago. This is just the first report in our investigative series. In future stories, we're going to be looking at what child protection systems are doing, what's working to save lives, and we're also pressing those in power for solutions. Lori Jangliha, Scripps News, Denver. You can find more from Lori Jane's investigation online. Check it out at scriptsnews.com on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Threads. We'll be right back. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. This stuff yeah. is a miracle. It took us 60 prototypes. Wow. When we made this stuff, it grew into the number one dermatologist recommended sweat brand for all oh, over man. the body. When people say, this is the first thing I've tried that stopped my sweat, that makes my day. We have a sweat quiz that'll customize the products for you based on where you sweat, based on how much you sweat. Free shipping, mm -hmm, money back guarantee. Mm -hmm. There's really no risk to giving it a try. If you had a sweaty face or sweaty underarms or sweaty hands, that's really why we made Carpe. Avoid expensive treatments, injections, and prescriptions. Your total body sweat solution is available at mycarpe.com. For over 100 years, this light has shined. Through generations of Americans, this light carries on. Reporting from Ukraine, Scripps News. A beacon of the free American press. Reporting the facts, telling the whole story. This light illuminates, it informs, and now shines even brighter. Scripps News.
Welcome back. So preparations for the upcoming school year are already underway and some districts have been racing against the clock to address an ongoing problem. National correspondent Clayton Zendel explains. It's true, summer break is starting to wind down, but in shorthanded school districts around the country, the effort to get more teachers and support staff into the classroom is just heating up. With summer waning and kids soon to be filling classrooms, schools nationwide are desperately trying to fill open jobs. The U.S. Department of Education found nearly half of public schools started the previous year without a full teaching staff. In high poverty neighborhoods, 57 percent of schools had at least one teacher vacancy. Teachers say a fix starts with better pay. When you even adjust for inflation, our teacher salaries are stuck in the 90s. Average starting teacher pay is just over $40,000 a year. Some school districts, like in San Diego, just agreed to give teachers a 10% raise. I have goosebumps um, thinking about it, and it's this is a huge win for us. But teachers say it's not just about money. There's, there's a lot of stressors that kind of add up with teachers, and they can get burnt out. Across the country, shrinking budgets mean teachers are stuck paying for school supplies out of their own pockets. Well over $500. Um, that's probably on the lower end. Parents near Kansas City, Missouri started an adopt a teacher fundraiser to help fill the gap. We don't want to lose them because they don't feel seen or supported. In Ohio, one district lost 75 staffers, including all five school psychologists. All of this pressure, lack of time, concern for my safety, and feeling like I can't be the teacher that I want to be has made me dread coming to work every day. Teachers also say they face a polarizing political climate in places like Florida, a state where lawmakers decide how to teach about sexuality, gender, and race issues. The state widely criticized for adopting curriculum suggesting there were benefits to people who were enslaved. It just isn't true. Uh, the truth is really that uh, enslaved people had their labor exploited. In some parts of the country, classes are being cut. Districts are recruiting teachers from outside the U.S., and states are having to adjust licensing rules. Ultimately, teachers say the biggest shortfall may be on learning. There is nothing more important than ensuring that every single student has access to a high-quality public education, and that starts by having caring, qualified educators across the board. Clayton Sandell, Scripps News, Denver. I'm Veronica Della Cruz for the audience leaving us right now. Your local programming is up next. And don't forget, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way, including details on a staffing shortage at 911 call centers across the country. We'll be right back. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Light up that grill because this rare Omaha Steaks deal is hotter than fire. For a limited time, you get four of our famous fork tender filet mignon, four air chilled boneless chicken breasts, four boneless pork chops, four burgers, and four jumbo franks. All of this for just $99.99. Order right now and you'll get 12 more burgers free. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV today to find all the hot deals.
Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Wednesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up right now in the day's top stories. The former personal lawyer for Donald Trump admits that he lied about two Georgia election workers mishandling 2020 presidential election ballots. In a filing late last night, Rudy Giuliani conceded he made defamatory statements about Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, but refused to acknowledge that his statements caused damage to these women. He plans to argue his statements about voter fraud in Georgia were protected free speech. We're going to find out in about 30 minutes from now if the Federal Reserve will be raising a key interest rate, another quarter point to fight inflation. That is what we are expecting to hear, and it would be the 11th time the Fed raises interest rates in 17 months and pushes them to the highest level since 2001. some breaking news right now out of Delaware. There is no longer a plea deal in Hunter Biden's case. He pleaded not guilty to two tax crimes after the deal fell apart in court today. National correspondent Alex Miller was in the courtroom. She joins us now live from Wilmington, Delaware. So Alex, take us through the hearing today. What exactly happened? Why did this plea deal fall apart? Veronica, there are a number of headlines coming out of today's hearing. This is something that we expected to take just a couple of minutes as both sides had obviously reached this plea deal. We thought there might be some questions from the judge. Instead, this took over three and a half hours. There were a number of breaks. The deal was on, then it was off, then it was on again. In the end right now, Hunter Biden has entered, as you said, a not guilty plea in this agreement right now because the judge says she has a lot more questions before she will effectively sign off. But even her ability to sign off on this agreement, whether she actually even has a role to play, is what was partially under debate today. Uh, there was a question about whether she has to agree or not to this agreement. Uh, and that is why he entered uh, a not guilty plea, because he says at this moment he's not going to leave a guilty plea on the table while both sides have to go back to the drawing board. One of the things that really was the impetus for this deal falling apart was the U.S. government has said that they are not done investigating Hunter Biden. Originally, uh, there are parameters that this deal was reached under that they say uh, that they were not going to continue prosecuting him. Um, but the, the details were a little bit murky. And so um, when the judge asked Hunter Biden if, uh, if he would agree to this, knowing that he could still be prosecuted uh, and and whether you know he really knew he was under investigation, he didn't. And the uh, Dep the Department of Justice says that they are still investigating him, and that. Uh they wouldn't exactly say what they're investigating, but that they said it could um, possibly have to do um, with FARA, which is um, foreign issues that he has done with his dealings overseas. Um, and so, uh, knowing that there was possibly this other charge, other investigations that could come down the pike. The uh, Hunter Biden's defense attorney said the deal is off. We took about a 20 plus minute recess while they went through trying to talk to each other about this and come to uh, some sort of conclusion. And basically what they agreed is that Hunter Biden in the future cannot be charged for anything related to his tax crimes 2014 to 2019, anything related to these drug charge uh, to drugs during this time and anything related to the specific gun charge uh, that he has been charged with a felony on. So after this agreement, if it does end up going through, that's what he's going to be protected from. But he's not going to be protected from any other investigations that could go through. The other issue that we saw in the courtroom that also led to a bit of a recess was uh, the judge asked Hunter Biden if he would agree, right? There's uh, a tax charge, two tax charges that he has this plea, plea deal with. And then there's another charge that has to do with felony possession of a gun when he uh, is a known drug addict. That is illegal. And so effectively, there was a plea agreement for this tax, these tax charges. And then uh, for the gun charge, they basically say they're not going to charge him at all. And so it's called a diversion agreement. And so uh, the judge asked Hunter Biden, would you agree to this tax, uh, to this tax plea deal if you 
didn't have this diversion agreement. And he said no. The federal government said he should be. And so there was another discrepancy between these two issues. They could not get on the same page. This is a case that has been going on an investigation for over five years. Uh, the defense attorney, by his own uh, admission, says that they've spent countless hours, sometimes 10-hour meetings, going line by line through Hunter Biden's taxes over the course of, you know, five or so years. And so the fact that they, whatever they got on paper and they present to a, presented to a judge, she was not buying it. It really, you know, goes to show how quickly, you know, in three hours, these years of discussions have fallen apart. And she said she doesn't want to be in the middle of this. Uh, and so she has basically asked them to go to the drawing board and answer a couple of more questions for her. They say they need about 14 days. She said she might need about 30. So we don't exactly know when we're going to be back inside this courtroom. But what we do know right now is that as of now, Hunter Biden has pled not guilty to all of these charges. All right, Alex Miller live for us there in Wilmington, Delaware. Alex, we appreciate the update. Thank you. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 911, what's the address of the emergency? Okay, stay with him. I'm going to give you some instructions. And they're coming as fast as they can. Okay, I'm going to update the paramedics one more time, and then I'm going to stay on the phone with you until they get there. 911, what's your emergency? All right, during an emergency, those are the words that signal that help is on the way. But a new survey shows that the people behind these calls have been struggling to get the job done. The National Emergency Number Association, along with Carbine, found that 911 call center workers have been feeling burnt out and undertrained. They polled 850 workers from across the country. 74% said that their 911 centers have been plagued by staff burnout. 82% say that their call centers are understaffed. Less than half felt prepared to handle any incident. 38% say that they're not prepared for an active shooter situation. And then 25% say that they are unprepared for mental health calls. Brian Fonts is here with me now. He is the CEO of the National Emergency Number Association who conducted this survey alongside Carbine. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's go ahead and go through some of these findings. Why exactly are call center workers feeling so burnt out right now? I think part of it is just the staffing problems 911 centers have today. 911 centers are understaffed by and large. And as a result of being understaffed and ensuring that 911 calls go through, the staff that remain on in the center must answer those 911 calls. So it's a lot more work for those that are remaining on the job. So how much of a safety concern is this? I mean, how concerned should we be that the first person that we may talk to in an emergency might might feel unprepared or burnt out? It's a it's an issue we should all be concerned about. I mean, we all know 911, correct? But we don't know very much about 911. And one of the key factors in that is that 911 professional with whom that caller interacts with and all that work that 911 professional does to ensure you have responses necessary for your emergency. So in the centers itself, uh, the 911 professionals should be trained. Many of them are, of course. Some states have requirements, minimum threshold requirements for training. Others don't. Uh, the staffing problems are often tied to uh, burnout, salary levels. Uh, 911 professionals are not classified by the federal government as public safety protective services. They're classified as clerical secretarial. And there's currently legislation uh, in Congress to reclassify 911 as, in fact, protective service. So when you combine all of these things and the labor market today, when you're trying to get young people to join the profession, and many of these young people can get the same amount of money, if not more, and may be fast-tracked into a supervisor or manager type of position, and you're given that option versus the option of being a clerical, secretarial, entry-level 911 professional at a lower salary, what are you going to do? Yeah. And so I think that you need to really focus on what's behind that phone call, and I appreciate you raising the questions. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here, uh, a lot. Uh, but you're saying that there is a worker shortage, which is not unheard of. It's something that the entire nation is experiencing right now. I know that there is also a shortage when it comes to law enforcement as well. And I would imagine that these two go hand in hand. But let's go ahead and start with this, because there has to be an incentive or a motivation for people to become a call center worker. 
How much does a position like this pay on average? Well, it, it, we don't have a national average number, to be perfectly honest with you. And that's one of the things that 911 lacks is in-depth research on the profession itself. And that's why we started the study with Carmine to gain some of the 911 professionals' perspectives about the job. And so it can vary from community to community. 911 is a local service. And so I'm not gonna throw a number out there because others will say, wait a minute, I'm not making that much money. And others would indicate, wow, you know, I am so underpaid. So you are saying this is a local service, so it's not monitored by the mm -hmm. government. It's not, it's not monitored by uh, the federal government, though you are saying that there is legislation out there uh, and maybe legislation around the training uh, of call center workers for these different types of scenarios. I know that you had just said that, that this could fall under the guideline of a person who only does clerical or secretarial type work, but we know that that isn't true. So who is in charge of the training and is it enough? What type of training does a call center worker receive? Sure, in some states, there are requirements for training that allows the individual to understand the basics of 911 and then also specialized training such as an active shooter situation or even in mental health preparedness. And so it depends again on the local jurisdiction to implement those training, uh, I don't know if you wanna call them requirements, so those training opportunities that may have applicability in that community. So it's, it's a lot local uh, in terms of anything above and beyond what may be established as a minimum threshold at the state level. So Brian, this is In something some that needs to go up to head. up the food chain, which is what it sounds like here. And I know that you had mentioned some legislation yeah. that might be out there, some proposed legislation, which might be the solution to all of this. So fill us in on what's happening right now sure. at the federal level. At the federal level, there's two pieces of legislation. One is to reclassify 911 from the Secretary of Clerical classification that was instituted over 50 years ago to the protective public safety service classification. And that's received bipartisan support, but even with bipartisan support, it's still a process to get legislation passed and sent to the president. But we're hopeful that will take place in this Congress. The second legislation is to upgrade our nation's 911 systems to 21st century technology called Next Generation 911, which will enable a number of different information rich phone calls to be able to be received and processed to the 911 center and therefore sent out to those who respond to the emergency. That legislation actually contains language regarding training on next generation 911 technology and how that can better serve the public these 911 professionals serve. So those two pieces of legislation are vitally important. And before I let you go quickly, Brian, are you hopeful that this problem will find a solution sooner rather than later? Yeah, I'm always, I I'm, tend to be more optimistic than not. And I am hopeful. I mean, it, truly, two of these issues rest in the hands of Congress. And, you know, I hope that Congress recognizes that something as fundamental as 911 is really brought into the 21st century and given the attention and finances and leadership it needs. So I am optimistic. All right, Brian Fonts from the National Emergency Number Association. Brian, thank you so much for stopping by today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, Russia's war on Ukraine is now turning its focus on hitting the country's grain industry. We're gonna take a closer look at the new attacks. That's next. Monster demand, staffing shortages, and possible relaxing of important safety measures. Scripps News breaks down the question, is it safe to fly the friendly skies? A Scripps News special report, tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Hi, I'm Caleb, and this is my story. I was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, or riddle bone disease. I have broken my bones almost 200 times, and I have had 11 surgeries. But I didn't let that stop me. I love to bike ride, climb, race, and I'm learning how to stand and walk. But I can only do all of this because of generous people like you and Shriners Hospitals for Children. Because of people like you, 
Shriners Hospitals for Children has helped more than 1.3 million kids just like me, regardless of their family's ability to pay. Shriners Hospitals for Children is only able to provide this world-class, life-changing medical care because of the generous gifts of people just like you. Because of you, I can ride my bike. I can play basketball. Because of people like you, I can run. I can smile. Will you send your love to the rescue today? When you go to loveshriners.org right now and give just 63 cents a day, you're helping kids just like me. Like me. Like me. When you give today, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as a thank you and a reminder of the love you gave to a kid just like me. Your gift, no matter how small, can help a child today. This is your moment to make a difference. When you pick up your phone, I know you have it right there, and call to give. You're helping kids like me. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, please call again or give right away at loveshriners.org. Your gift makes a difference. Thank you for giving. We're back. Jesse, for $500. Let's find out. Can you take it? You're going to want this. What? Start the clock. And go. Hair from the drain. <laughs> My drain. That rap song you recorded in secret. Yikes. Ooh, salmon. We heard you're allergic. I can't take it. Oh. Mimi, you ready? No. <laughs> There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. Why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, Saturday nights at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Focus of fighting in Ukraine shifted in the past week. Attacks that previously hit the front lines in the east are now focused on the western port city of Odessa. Now, the city is one of Ukraine's main ports for transporting grain, one of the country's biggest exports. Visual investigations correspondent Jake Godin reviewed some of the video coming from the ground in Odessa. He has more on this. The southern city of Odessa in Ukraine has been bombed almost every night ever since Russia pulled out of the international grain deal that they had signed with Ukraine. The city's infrastructure has been bombed not only at the ports, but also with parts that have to do with shipping grain out of the city. Odessa is no stranger to Russian missile and drone strikes. Since the beginning of Russia's invasion, the southern Ukrainian port city has often been targeted by Russian cruise missiles or Iranian-made drones and sustained major damage from these kinds of attacks. But in recent days, the real target in all of this devastation is Ukraine's grain sector. La decisión por parte de Rusia, no solo la invasión de Ucrania como ilegal e injustificada, sino esta acción. Odessa is a key hub for Ukraine's grain exports. The busy port city sits right on the Black Sea and has long been Kyiv's link to the global economy. Moscow has had Odessa firmly in its crosshairs from the early days of the war, hoping to choke Ukraine's economy by cutting off the ports in and around the city. But Russia has stepped up its brutal attacks after pulling out of a landmark grain deal amid Ukraine's efforts to retake occupied territory. Now, instead of blocking ships from leaving port, Moscow is targeting Odessa's shipping facilities with attacks using both cruise missiles and drones chipping away at the infrastructure that allows Ukraine to provide grain to the world. The Kremlin's actions, including its suspension of its participation in the Black Sea Grain Initiative, have caused serious volatility to food prices, which will hurt impoverished and hard-hit areas of the world the most. It's not just the ports on the Black Sea that are being targeted either. 
Earlier this week, a port on the Danube River was targeted by Russia with Iranian-made Shahed-136 drones. In evening videos shared online, you can hear the telltale sound of the drone's engine shortly before the large explosion hits the port at the Ukrainian city of Reni. Right on the other side of the river is Romania, a member of NATO. Romania's president condemned the strikes in a statement on Twitter. These attacks on Ukraine's grain infrastructure, along with Russia's pullout from the grain deal, have also sent global grain prices climbing over the past week, making the impacts of Russia's attack on Ukraine's agriculture felt worldwide. The damage to this infrastructure isn't only visible from the ground, but also from space. Satellite imagery company Planet Labs shared with Scripps News these images showing damage to the port city of Reni, as well as the ports near the southern city of Odessa. You can see damage to the silos on their roofs, as well as the grain storage areas in Reni. The U.S. is sending a new round of military aid to Ukraine. And according to the Department of Defense, it includes ammunition and support equipment. Well, in the U.S. right now, the lottery is the focus of a lot of folks' attention. The Mega Millions jackpot is climbing. We're going to share how much money is now up for grabs. And a Michigan man preparing for his longest open water swim. So you're talking like nine to ten marathons consecutively to get across. He'll explain why he's taking on a challenge only a few are brave enough to face. We'll be right back. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without pain. Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Now, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like, let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. It's Christmas all July at Balsam Hill. It's never too early to save, so why wait? Get amazing deals now on our wide variety of exclusive designs. Find the perfect tree at up to 50% off at balsamhill.com. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to trifracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to trifracture.com now to save on glass prints. We need some help. I know. I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. And if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Join renowned journalists and filmmakers. Oh, my God. For news stories every week. What else do we have to take? Scripps News Showcase. Sunday nights at 9, 8 central on Scripps News. And we would like to hear from you. Give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. The number is 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. 
Well, a Michigan man is taking on a large body of water for a cause that he is saying is just as big. Jamie Sherrod of Scripps News Grand Rapids takes a deeper dive into his efforts to make a difference in children's lives. Swimming has been a longtime passion for Brian Huffman. I swam in high school many years ago, and then I did triathlons in college. I actually coached swimming at a pool uh, in Grand Rapids uh, for quite a while. Now he gets his laps in at the Holland Aquatic Center, where he's training for a new adventure. Met Coach Mike here, Mike Daly. He coaches the Masters group here, and he kind of helped refine my stroke, make it more efficient so that I could make my way across. Across Lake Michigan, it's a challenging task. So you're talking like nine to 10 marathons consecutively to get across. And so you can stop and tread water or float, but you just can't have anything. I can't hold onto the boat or anything else to hold me up. But it's for an important cause, raising money to offer free swim lessons for West Michigan kids. In West Michigan, we're surrounded by water and you can't live here as a child without being exposed to water. His goal is $50,000, but he says his ultimate goal is for any kid to be able to come to the Aquatic Center for swim lessons, regardless of their finances. We're able to reduce that chance of drowning by 88% when we get children in here for a structured swim lesson. Dan Christian is an instructional program manager at Holland Aquatics. He's grateful for what Brian is doing, but says swimming 50 plus miles is tough to wrap his head around. The, the amount of training that goes into it and just, you know, on top of that, the generosity, it's just, it's something special you don't see every day. Brian previously swam 22 miles across the English Channel back in October. He says the challenges he encountered in those waters won't be the same as Lake Michigan. Michigan, despite it being twice as long. Main one being current and the water temperature tends to be colder. There are concerns of hypothermia, other health risk and even death. But Brian says there will be an escort boat nearby with the medical team in case anything goes wrong. Uh, you're disqualified if you touch the boat, uh, but they'll guide and then I set the speed. And so they just keep staying next to me and guiding me across until we hit the other side. And then the official rules are I got to clear onto the shore under my own power for it to be official. They'll also toss him food to make sure he eats along the way as he works to keep West Michigan's children a little safer. The swim itself I expect to be very difficult. I'm, I'm somewhat not looking forward to the swim more having have done the swim. The rewards kind of in, in doing it and, and being able to say you're one of the few people that have done it and um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm Jamie Sherrod for Scripps News. Well, the Mega Millions jackpot is creeping closer to a billion dollars after there wasn't a winner in last night's drawing. The jackpot is now an estimated 910 million. The next drawing is Friday and it's going to have an estimated payout of 464 million if the winner chooses to take that lump sum payment, which most winners do. Good luck to you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. And remember, you can always check us out on ScripsNews.com. If you're staying with us right now, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern.